Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. This week we're returning to a technique that I showed in a previous video and that's where I use a black watercolour marker pen and a clean wet brush to move the watercolour lines around a little bit. Now if you happen to see the video that I did previously you'll know that I worked on a drawing or a painting if you prefer, either way a sketch of a cheetah walking along. But this time I wanted to try a different animal which had different challenges. So the cheetah, when we're dealing with the black and white image, is predominantly white with black patterning. And the shadows are you know, quite simple because the cheetah has a quite a smooth coat. But today I'm actually working on a bison. So you know, bisons have a much more textured uh, coat and they're generally darker in colour overall. So what I'm doing at the moment, as you can see, is just putting down the beginnings of the shape of this bison. So we've got, got some fairly obvious horns there. Just below the horns are little indications of the ears. And then I've just jumped ahead a little bit in time to um, to save you sort of watch you having to watch the entire drawing out. But there's the there's the completed line drawing. And now I'm straight in with the clean wet brush. Uh, this is just a synthetic brush that I use for acrylic normally. Uh, it's half inch wide. It's flat. And it's a little bit frayed at the edges, which I quite like because it makes for, you know, nice frayed marks, which is kind of useful if you're depicting fluffy or hairy animals. So now that the camera's come back into focus, you can see that that frayed brush is allowing me to put down kind of a fluffiness and a hairiness over the, the back of the hump of this bison. And I'm adding some tone to the head of the bison now, really just more or less just blocking in. I'm moving the, the pen marks around enough to just fill in that area with grey. So in some areas I've defined the outline quite clearly, uh, in other places quite loosely, and in a few places not at all. And the reason for the areas where I've left it, left it with no outline is I want to move the paint into those areas with the brush. So as I move across the body of the animal, I'm sweeping the brush quite quickly, but keeping in mind the direction that the hair is falling. And thinking about my mark making all the time. So do I want long sweeping arcs with the brush or do I want quick little flicks of the brush, depending on what kind of texture I'm trying to put down on the paper. The paper I'm using this week, uh, once again, is just some uh, watercolour paper. But you can use mixed media paper, uh, even Bristol board if you've used that. As long as you don't get that too wet, that's a beautifully almost glass smooth surface to, to draw and paint on. But as I say, you do have to be careful with Bristol board not to overload the paper with water um, because it isn't really designed for getting wet. But you can see I've got some nice kind of fluffy bits now on the belly of the animal, at the bottom of the chin, uh, the bottom of the chest, and as I mentioned before, along the top line of the back there. I've included a loose horizon line with the brush and also a very loose cast shadow as well. And having let that first layer dry, I'm now coming back in with the pen to put in some deeper shadows. So when you're painting or drawing dark animals, you know, you're really looking at sort of subtle shades of gray and gradually deepening and deepening the, the darks so that you get a whole range of darks and it's those subtle, uh, subtle variations which help create the illusion that this animal is, is a real black animal where the light is still bouncing off it. So working in just black and white is obviously a really good way to focus on tone only and, and not to get too tangled up with worrying about colour. So even when I'm using the pen here, I'm being somewhat careful about the direction in which I put the marks. So I'm still thinking about either following the direction the hair is falling or thinking about the surface I'm depicting. And so, for example, when I went over the bridge of the nose a moment ago, I did more or less horizontal, slightly curved lines because that's the shape of that surface. So just taking a little bit more care now to put in some indication of the nostrils. I'm still using the brush tip here. So 
as you may have seen in the previous video or some of my other videos, these pens do have a fine line tip on the other end. But for now, I'm just staying with the brush, keeping the marks fairly big and loose. And working my way around the animal, gradually deepening the main areas of shadow. So working on the lower four legs now. And then what, what I'll do in just a moment is kind of smooth out some of these, these patches of, of dark. So one of the beauties about this particular technique is that it's quite quick, of course. You can, you can achieve effects quite quickly. So this is a really great way to do a preliminary sketch for you know, a more involved acrylic painting. If you want to test out how the lighting of your painting or image is going to work across the picture frame, then you know this is a, this is a really cool way to do it because it's so quick, but you can kind of simulate a painted effect. So once again, I'm coming in with the, the wet brush now and starting to move around the the uh, the marks that I put down on the animal's head. And once again, the frayed brush has introduced a lovely uh, jagged edge to, to simulate the fur or the hair of the animal on the right hand side of the, the bison's head there. And you can see that as I move the darker areas of shadow around, I you know, automatically soften the edges of those marks that I put down. And as I move the paint over the first layer of light grey, I'm starting to get more subtle variations in my greys now, so I'm getting multiple mid greys automatically. So once again, moving around the next area of dark, uh, dark ink or dark paint, working on the legs and the flank of the animal. And you can see I've left the eyes pretty much untouched. They've got a first layer of, of uh, grey on them. Just a very light grey, but I haven't gone over those at all uh, since I put the second application of, of watercolour down. So in a way, you know, what you're also another sort of medium you're also simulating here is, you know, is pencil or biro. So if I was if I was going to do this kind of black and white image with a pencil or biro, I would probably start with um, some loose pencil lines. And then I just, with a either a scalpel or a pencil sharpener, you, I just take some shavings off of the uh, the, the tip of the pencil, the the, uh, the point of the pencil, put that into some paper towel, and kind of you know mush it up a bit to create some graphite dust, and then I'd move that graphite dust around to create soft areas of shadow within the drawing. And then having done that, I might go over the top with the pencil again, or perhaps a biro, as I said and do some cross hatching to, to do different shades and create different contours. But here, you know, we don't have to do that. We can just move it around with a wet brush. So while I was chatting away there, I switched to the fine line tip of the watercolor marker pen and I used that for the tail. And I'm still using that now for the eyes of this bison. So, you know, this is going to be a fairly simple treatment, obviously, because we're working to fairly limited time. The idea is to do a, a sketch or a drawing or a a loose watercolour painting in around about 10 minutes. But you can see by just picking out the eyes there and keeping things fairly simple, it's still quite effective. And the light grey coat of watercolour that we had in the general eye area, leaving some of that exposed creates the highlights in the eye, but they're not so bright, you know, that they're perhaps a little bit, you know, un unrealistic. So just tidied up the nostrils there and I'm now just putting in a line for the mouth and the chin and just those few marks are enough to pull out an expression and make the face of this animal come to life. So I'm signing the picture now but having done that I've realized I hadn't quite finished so um, you know that happens sometimes so I need to come back in and just excuse the camera going out of focus momentarily so I'm just coming back in back in and adding a little bit of light tone to the to the horns because leaving them pure white it made them just look very flat. And 
And so we're almost done there. And in fact, I did decide to leave that image there and I wasn't actually too happy at the time with the sloping horizon line. But when I uploaded the image, so the image is on my website as usual, I'll put the link in the description below. But I also sell artwork through the, the site Redbubble. And Redbubble is really cool because you can put your images onto different items of merchandise like floor cushions that I'm showing you here. But the, the sloping horizon line, which I partially regretted when I looked at the painting when it was finished, I, I realized it actually works really well with a, stag with a staggered pattern. So when you put it onto a, a king size duvet, as I'm about to show you, I feel it works really well. The sort of slope of the back of the animal and the sloping horizon line, they kind of they, they work really well with the, the slightly staggered pattern, I personally feel. Um, so there we go. There's uh, a little how to on how to draw or paint a bison in watercolour. Hope you really enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thank you very much for watching.